Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome back to your latest episode of Hot News. I'm your host, Brett. We're going to be talking about the greatest tech news that's going on in the world right now, including the fact that you can get ray tracing on your Super Nintendo Entertainment System, as well as NVIDIA has an event planned for some time soon, and the UK might be buying scalpers who buy stuff with bots. And we're going to get into all of that after we talk about today's episode sponsored Chirp. Today's episode is brought to you by Chirp and more specifically their Wheel Plus. This little ring looking doodad is perfect for making sure that you stretch your back in the way that you need. It helps to alleviate lower back pain, upper back pain, neck pain, all of that because with its innovative design and its spinal canal, it'll keep your spine safe from unwatered pressure and allow you to actually stretch your back in a way that feels good and appropriate. It comes in three different sizes. You have the gentle, the medium, and the deep tissue. The Chirp Wheel Plus is definitely my go-to product for relieving my back pressure as well as stretching before and after exercises. My wife loves it too. So check it out at the link in the video description if you're interested. Now let's chirp about Super Nintendo Ray Tracing. This appears to be a project from a lone wolf who has been working on this for quite some time in his spare time. And as you can see right here, there are fully ray trace scenes on the SNES. This is because the SNES had like an expansion cartridge slot that you could actually plug things in. And you typically would use that for like enabling extra graphics with the Super FX chip on Star Fox. But now he's coded it to make it so that it'll actually do fully ray trace scenes. You see the mess of wires here, according to him, is because he has to step down five volts to 3.3 volts. And that's why it's all a massive complication. Otherwise, it could be a lot more simple. But just watching the video of it happening, he says it's running about 15 to 20 FPS on this. And I mean, this this is fully ray trace, no rasterization whatsoever. This is incredible. Honestly, I feel like this runs better on a SNES than Cyberpunk's running on the PS4. Wow, this is great stuff. There's a ton of information for that down below in the description so you can check that out out. Speaking of ray tracing, let's talk about the company whose biggest marketing point is ray tracing, so much so that they're willing to sacrifice integrity for it, and that is NVIDIA. They're going to have apparently a special broadcast on January 12th, and a lot of indication is that this is going to be the RTX 30 mobile series being announced, as well as some people speculating that this might indeed be the RTX 3080 Ti and 3060 slash 50 announcements, so we could hold our breaths for that, but I just want to point out that this is happening at 9 a.m. Pacific on January 12th, whereas Lisa Sue's AMD keynote for CES is one hour prior to that. So it does seem like likely this has to do with mobile stuff. They might be waiting on AMD to announce their Ryzen 5000 series mobile chips before they go ahead and launch their mobile versions of their laptops. Or this happens to be them usurping AMD and getting all of their mind share. This couldn't possibly be collaboration. No, that would be impossible. And what's not impossible is that Computex is going to be a physical event this year, at least according to Titra, the company that runs Computex. They're saying that they anticipate that they'll be over the worst of COVID. I mean, Taiwan's been doing pretty dang good, uh, fewer than 800 confirmed cases in that entire country. Anyways, they're expecting that they'll be able to host it from June 1st through the 4th. And I can say that if I am vaccinated at that point, I'll be heading to Computex. It'll be great to see all of the other tech tubers and the companies there. I'm excited for that. But people aren't excited about scalpers and people who are buying things with bots on the internet. So much so that apparently in the UK, a few of the MPs are putting forward legislation regarding banning the ability to sell at a premium objects that were purchased with bots and just essentially making scalping using automated bots illegal, not necessarily scalping itself, which I think might be a fair tone to strike there if it's not your ability to buy it and resell it yourself should you have that because it does create supply chain issues and kind of creates things what do you think should this be a law that's happening do you think that this is a crackdown a bit too much I want to hear from you down below in the comments I, at least from what I understand about the law it wouldn't ban people from using bots to get these consoles at retail for personal gain or for friends and family so it's not like it's getting rid of bots altogether you can't kill me I'm not alive. But speaking of that, Walmart, apparently their chief information officer, I believe, chief information security officer came out and said that with all of the bot protection that they put in place, apparently on the evening of Black Friday, they ended up blocking 20 million bot attempts within the first 
30 minutes just to show you how prolific and prevalent this is. My goodness, bots swiping all the products everywhere. Speaking of bots, let's talk about bot money for a second. Bitcoin passed 20,000 US dollars for the first time yesterday, which is just insane. As of filming, it's at $20,811. And I mean, it, it, it almost did this like a couple weeks ago and then went back down. So we'll see if that this continues to rise now that it's broken through the barrier of $20,000. Maybe we might see a reuptake like we did back in 2017, 2018, or this could just be it just rising gradually. We'll have to see. Are you investing in Bitcoin? Are you cashing out? What you doing? Let me know down below in the comments. But if I had Bitcoin money, I'd be buying one of these. Fantex announcing their Glacier AIO liquid cooling CPU coolers. I just love the look of that like infinity mirror that they got going on right there, as well as the Enthu Evolve type cutouts that they have for it. These are going to be Asetek pump based AIOs, but I think these just look gorgeous. Fantex doing a good job. I really appreciate these. But people aren't appreciating what's going down on GOG because there was a game that was supposed to be released yesterday known as Devotion. It's a Taiwanese horror game that's been praised for its psychological horror that's been implemented into it. However, it has a sordid history, especially with regards to the Chinese government, because apparently they put a meme in there that was supposed to be taken out prior to launch of the Chinese president as Winnie the Pooh, and it got apparently review bombed on Steam after that, and then it got removed from different places. And then they said that it was removed from Steam because of technical issues that they were going to fix, but then they never actually fixed it or brought it back out. And they said that it caused immeasurable harm to the team and publisher with everything that happened with the Winnie the Pooh meme. And then GOG was going to be the first re-release of that because they said that they're not going to re-release in physical form. But then yesterday, GOG tweeted out that after receiving many messages from gamers, we have decided not to list the store in our games, which just kind of really it's kind of it's kind of confusing. A lot of people think that this might be the Chinese government influencing things, but it's not necessarily clear if that's the reason why I haven't heard of this game prior to yesterday. So Streisand effect on that one. So it's we'll have to see what plays and what shakes out of this. But it doesn't it's not a good look for for GOG as far as removing it when I don't think many gamers were calling for this to not be released in the first place. But Honda's asking for their cars to be unreleased, sort of, because they have 737,000 Accord and Insights that need to be recalled over a software flaw that's going on that can interrupt the communication between two different parts of the car. And this is part of a larger recall affecting 1.4 million vehicles. But just in case you have either one of those, you can check it out. The link in the video description. Find out more about the recall. And you can find out more about what you're friends doing on their phones if they decide to share it with you on Discord because they're now rolling out screen sharing functionality to their mobile versions. Speaking of mobile stuff, Stadia has launched in beta on iOS at this point, also adding Ubisoft Plus games to their lineup. So now you can play Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the mobile gaming platform and the iOS web app is now in beta working on iOS so you could potentially do that and Amazon also rolling out their cloud gaming service Luna to certain Android devices, which you can check here in case you want to do that, which still Luna doesn't have the Ubisoft package. So Stadia is going to one up them and Twitch one and up in themselves with them announcing that they've had a new record of 1.7 billion hours of content viewed on their platform in November with the largest category now being just chatting with 228 million hours viewed, which is probably the category that I stream the most in, which totally come over and watch our streams, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Anyways, the reason why uh, I stream in Just Chatting simply because they don't have a PC building category, and that's kind of lame. And there's science and technology, but it's not kind of like if you look at the science and technology thing, it's kind of like programmers or people who are like coding things or building robots. Building a PC is not exactly in the same vein. It's kind of you know, subterranean compared to all of what's happening on that side. But gaming's just going along real fast because it's been announced that five mobile games have crossed a billion dollars in revenue this year, according to a report that came out with the two largest being PUBG Mobile and Honor of Kings bringing in 2.6 and 2.5 billion dollars respectively, and third place being a paltry little over one billion dollars with Pokemon Go. It's disgusting how bad Pokemon Go is compared to PUBG Mobile. And this isn't a disgusting move. This is a move that I 
actually liked by Netflix. It turns out they're testing an audio only mode in the app, which allows you to turn off the video and then just listen to whatever show that you have on, which would be a great way to actually kind of use it as background noise when you're on the go and not waste as much data if, if you're streaming out in the open world, because a lot of people use videos as background noise. So this could potentially be a win. It's not yet known when Netflix is going to roll this out to everybody, but it is an interesting feature nonetheless. And nonetheless is what I'm going to do with this episode of being done on tech news stuff. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, Chirp. Today's video is sponsored by Chirp. Check them out at the link in the video description. If you care about taking care of your back, stretching, which is incredibly important, even if you don't work out, just having limberness in your body, very enjoyable. Okay, so stretch, number one. But then number two, maybe try it with the Chirp wheel. Links in the video description for that. And that's gonna wrap it up. We're all done here with the tech news. Come back tomorrow for more tech news. And then, uh, you know, we'll see you next week for more tech news because that's what's going on here. So thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.